I'm Sarah Bernard and coming up next on City Corner, we have some exciting news and guests about arts in St. Louis. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome to City Corner. We've got some great, exciting, and fun guests coming up today. Um, lots of exciting things happening, as always, in St. Louis related to the arts. And we've got um, guests from the Fox Performing Arts Charitable Foundation and a very well-known photographer. And we're gonna talk about them and also talk about arts careers and how, if you're interested in maybe looking at a path in, in the arts, how you might do that. So first up, we've got Kate. Kate Vanderwilly, Vanderwilly, is that right? Yes. Pronounced right? Okay, yes. from the Fox Performing Arts Charitable Foundation, and we're so glad you're here. And um, so we're going to learn about the Fox, um, the, the, the foundation, the charitable foundation that's related to the theater, but unrelated, related, not related. And then a little bit about you, because you are fairly new to the job of executive director, two months, two yes. months in, right? Yes, that's correct. Good. Okay, so let's start with the Fox Performing Arts Charitable Foundation. So as most of us here in St. Louis know, the Fox reopened in the... 1980s as this amazing performing arts facility and it's a for-profit theater but there's this charitable side that came around and you were telling me 2002 yes okay so tell us a little bit about that and why it came to be and what your mission is okay so um the fox performing arts foundation uh came to be in 2002 uh by mary strauss and um, our mission is to support a lifelong love of the arts, um, starting with the youth in the St. Louis region. Yeah, and which is really wonderful because if you can get kids loving to perform, even if they don't perform as adults, having had that experience and even just enjoying the performing arts as an audience member, um, it's a great place to start. I know my kids started performing when they were little and they don't mm -hmm. do it anymore, but mm -hmm. they will always love live theater as a result. So that's really what Mary was thinking. I think Mary Strauss, who who is the owner of the Fox Theater and, and started, brought it back to life with her husband, um, who has since passed, um, Leon Strauss, back in the early 1980s. Correct. So she has a love of philanthropy. Yes. And also a love of the arts, obviously. Yes. So, um, so bringing that home to our high school students is really what you guys are all about. Yes. So what are some of the ways that you do that? Uh, so... We provide a series of events throughout the year. Um, the first one that will be coming up in January is the Teen Talent Competition. Registration for that opens in November, and it is kids from all over the area um, compete for different scholarships that they have available, and it's a three-part adjudicated um, program. Okay, so tell, what does that mean, three parts? So, so there's a preliminary round um, where everyone performs, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a semi-final round, and then all of the finalists will move on, and they'll have the opportunity to uh, perform on the Fox stage. And how many get to that round, approximately? Uh, 16. 16. 16 acts, I should say. So the acts could be anywhere from one uh, student, or we've had groups of five, six, uh, or more. Okay, so it can be a musical group, performing Music, group. Yep, we've had circus performers, we've had bands, dance troops, uh, anything that you can think of. Yeah, and one of the fun things is that last performance is open to the public. Yes. And it's at the Fox, like you said, on the yes. stage. So the public can go and watch these amazing um, high school students. They're, they're all high school, right? Yes, they're all high school students. So okay. it's nine through 12. Okay, so you end up with 16, and from that you have what, first, second, and third place? First, second, and third place, and then we also have um, a variety of other scholarships that are available. And kids have the opportunity to perform multiple years. Okay. Um, so if they don't make it to finals one year, they might make it another year. Um, and then they could also uh, have the opportunity to win multiple scholarships. And so it, do you know if in the past that's happened, that the kids come back? Is that a regular yes. thing? Okay, so yes, they, they maybe start as freshmen and mm -hmm. they're, they're coming back all four years yes. to give it a shot. 
So you end up with 16 uh, at the final public performance. Roughly how many get to start out in that first round? Do you know? 200. So 200. Okay, mm -hmm. so 200 acts, whether mm -hmm. it's one person mm -hmm. or more. And I, I know I've attended in the past at the Fox, which is super fun. It's mm -hmm. amazing, really. And I've seen all kinds of, from ukulele players to, to Broadway performers. Um, what do you, Broadway style performers, I should say. So what, what other kinds of acts um, do you know have um, performed in the past? Um, we have had, some of the winners have been um, the Cotton Club. They uh, were a um, tap dancing troupe and it was um, three individuals they performed. We've had circus performers, uh, live bands, individual solo artists have won. Last year, our winner was Audrey uh, Berg and um, Trifecta. And Trifecta was a circus um, troupe. So and really, anyone with any kind of performing skills, and these are the best of the best. Yes. Um, so, um, but everyone has an opportunity to apply to be part of the first round. And yes. that starts in November. Yes. But you can pre-register now. I just yes. want to make sure our kids yep. know this. Yep. Okay. We, yeah, you can pre-register now. Go to our website, and um, there's plenty of information there. and It'll lead you exactly where you need to go. That's so fun. And is there anything else throughout the year that the Fox Performing Arts Charitable Foundation does? Yes, we we also do Kids Night at the Fox, and that is buy one adult ticket and you get a uh, child ticket to, uh, into the Fox for free. And we have all sorts of activities uh, for kids in the lobby and all throughout the Fox that they can participate in um, just to really get a good um, viewpoint of the entire theater. And just introduce kids, young kids to performing, yes. uh, the performing arts. Is that a particular date or show? Do we know yet? We will be announcing the date of uh, the 2023 um, performance. It, or yes. Show. In so, and, and I imagine that sh that fills up pretty fast. Yes. Yeah. So yep. you've got to stay tuned for that. Yes. <laughs> okay, yep. good. Um, so lots of great things. And mm -hmm. Kate, um, I want to shift gears just a little bit and talk about you because you are two months into this role as executive director, which is an amazing job for a young person who had, uh, we were talking a little bit before the show about your background. Um, you were from a small town in Missouri mm -hmm. and went to school in Missouri, yes. um, the University of Central Missouri, right? Yes. Warrens Warrensburg. Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the path that led you. Did you always want to get into, um, into an arts management kind of role? So I knew I wanted, I loved um, working with people, being in and around people, and I knew I wanted to do events. And um, my first position in St. Louis was with Grand Center, Inc., and that's where my love for the arts really, really took off and developed. Um, we did really fun events like Dancing in the Street and First Night, um, among other opportunities. Another one is um, Music at the Intersection. And from there, it just kind of blossomed. Um, after I was at Grand Center, I went to Fair St. Louis, did events there for many years, and uh, now I'm here. Yeah, so your attraction is uh, was to putting on big events for the public. Yes. Did you ever perform as on stage as a young person? Um, I did dance when I was very small, but... Uh, no, not not as a teenager. So what, is, what do you feel like with these kids um, who are such amazing performers? Um, does it make you wish that you were there again and we had that opportunity? I love the opportunity to see children um, and these teens really blossom and uh, develop their love. We also, have, we also do an audition intensive and it's a week long program and it was really, really amazing to see how these kids progressed from um, beginning just starting out and all the way through um, the end of the week and how much they were able to change. And that just really is uh, fulfilling for me being able to see kids develop their skills and their talents. Yeah, so the audition Intensa was is also part of the Fox Performing yes. Arts Charitable Foundation, and that was this summer? Yes. Okay, so yep. that's enough. That's really neat to see that for your experience, and you were new, brand new to your role, but having seen that um, 
progress in yes. just one week yes. for these students. That's yeah. so that's really exciting and fun. So so college to Grand Center, mm -hmm. uh, which is our our arts hub of St. Louis, to Fair St. Louis. What mm -hmm. a great fun annual event! And now um, in this really great role working with Mary Strauss, um, mm -hmm. as legendary as she is. I mean, that's an amazing opportunity in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And then all of these um, very very talented high school students that we have in this town. I mean, the arts in St. Louis and, and our high school students and the performing arts that comes out of, out of our schools is truly, truly amazing. It really is. And there's so many careers in the arts that um, I feel like a lot of kids might not necessarily know about. Some of our past performers um, work on Broadway now. We have dance teachers now that were performers in the teen talent competition. So really, the the sky's the limit. The sky is the limit, and that's really a great way to wrap this. And not just on stage, but doing behind the scenes. There's so much opportunity there. Maybe even more opportunity for our for our young people. So um, careers in the arts is just such a great a great thing to always be thinking about. We're going to take a break right now, Kate. Thank you so much for joining us. Your information is here on ways that people can reach out and learn more about um, these opportunities coming up for our high school students. And uh, we will be back in a few minutes with another amazing artist in St. Louis, a very well-known photographer who is um, who shoots our iconic landmarks. And we're going to hear more about his career as well. So stay tuned right here on City Corner. Fifty over ninety. One eighty over one eleven. One sixty over one ten. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it, or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. many reasons to love St. Louis, you can't pick just one. What I love about St. Louis is the 79 unique neighborhoods and 108 beautiful city parks, including Forest Park, which is actually larger than Central Park in New York, and the gorgeous Tower Grove Park right here. And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. So come and experience St. Louis. Voices like your text to emoji ratio, Oh man, the selfies. Ah! Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. 
Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. There are so many reasons to love St. Louis, you can't pick just one. arts, architecture, and culture. An all new development, including the Cortex Community Center. And you're never too far from great music and entertainment. So come and experience St. Louis. If you smoked, this new lung cancer screening could save your life. Visit SaveByTheScan.org. Welcome back. I'm Sarah Bernard, and we're here with City Corner. And today's show, we've been focused on the arts in St. Louis. And we have next a guest who is probably one of the most well-known photographers in St. Louis. You've definitely seen his art around town and in books and elsewhere. He wanted to be a photographer and give it a year. 51 years later, he is still shooting our town. So welcome, Jim Trotter. So glad to have you here. So you've been you've been shooting St. Louis and St. Louisans Correct. for a long time, half a century. Started in <laughs> black and white days almost. It was just transitioning to color when yeah. I started. Actually, I started shooting weddings and I would photograph half of them in black and white and half in color. So yeah. it's gone. That, that was the close. style back then. Yeah. And, was, and we're kind of seeing that again with right. weddings. Yeah, black and white is kind of beautiful in a way. It's uh, simpler and uh, you can make really nice art things with black and white. So I like black and white, but most people for landmarks, you know, they would see color. They want to see what was there, you know. So. Right, right. So, well, you were about to pick up your book. Oh, pick yeah. it up because this is your your newest book that's not published yet. Correct. This book is work in progress, but I have most of the images produced already. And now I have to decide, do I want to upgrade? And this is one of my previous books. And I included various things with, you know, in Missouri beyond just St. Louis. But Landmarks of St. Louis is going to be mostly St. Louis region. This is, uh, you know, all the greater St. Louis area. So Greater St. Louis Incorporated is a person that was going to use this book, too, to help promote St. Louis, bring business into St. Louis. So yeah. when you look at this book, you're going to say, I got to go to that city. Yeah. Right. Or I love my city. Right. I love the city I'm in. Right. So when, how, how did you end up starting um, shooting our landmarks? We have amazing landmarks in this town. Well, and, the arch, you know, the arch is and a lot of it, it, we've seen them in your, your, your posters and your, your big pictures around in many office buildings and some of our landmark buildings right. have your work. So how did you get started with that? Well, my dad actually was an artist, and for a while he would do, actually do illustrations. So we would go out and say, photograph something, and then he'd take it and turn it into an illustration. But actually transition now to where they're just using photographs. And plus, when you use something like uh, Photoshop, you don't even have to do illustrations anymore. So that's definitely a dying business. But my dad uh, was a, like an illustrator, and... He preferred to send me out to do the shot. <laughs> so you would go take the picture for him and bring it back. Correct. He would loosey it. He had a little gizmo that would project it onto a wall, and then he could sketch it, you know, and that was uh, cheating, of course. But if you can cheat well, <laughs> that's the objective, you know. And so what did he do with his illustrations? Well, he did ads and things, you know, for people. And then uh, if you look at the, you know, like, 60s and back, half the book is illustrations, you know, and they were just getting photography as the main driving force. But uh, I enjoyed photographing things, so I just kept shooting. And, you know, we we found actually that we could make money, I guess, doing weddings. So for a while, we were actually one of the largest photography studios in St. Louis doing weddings. 
And then my brother-in-law took that business over and I just continually went into more commercial, you know, doing uh, product shots. And uh, I actually specialize in these very large murals too. And uh, I was just telling someone else here that uh, we, for Price Waterhouse, we made a 32 foot one. And uh, what we do, we have a gizmo, it's uh, called a gigapan. It'll shoot a picture, like I did this inside here one time. It'll do a 360, you can program it. Like I would shoot the picture, well here, this one here, that's the one that Price Waterhouse actually. Okay, this yeah. one of the art, the yeah. riverfront. 32 the foot, actually they did it in black and white. How about that? Yeah. Actually, they bought this one and another similar one. Um, so if you go to Price Waterhouse on the eighth floor, you get off the elevator and poof, 32 foot picture. Yeah, but, so that, uh, that's your photo right. taken when? This was probably two or three years ago. Now the sky was not quite that exciting and the river maybe not quite. See the reflection in the river? So you do tricks in Photoshop to make it look better. And uh, actually that sky I shot from the art museum. It was really a cool night. So I stole that sky from the art museum. And I put so, you're, it in, so you're an put artist. So the photography is just the basis for the final product, which is a piece of art. Correct. Because you use your eye for color and design and your, your mechanical abilities, if you will, to right. turn this image into a piece of art. That's the objective and get somebody, mm -hmm. what you go for is, can you get a wow? Yeah. You know, or can you get them to say, I love it enough to buy it? Yeah. And your art is in these books um, that have been published in the past and new one coming up. And people can buy these coffee table books around town right. or how else can per people purchase? Well, they can get them from, you know, Amazon and that. But uh, the History Museum has been very good about having the book. And, uh -huh. uh, in their gift shop. Yeah. So they're my, one of my better suppliers. I was with Borders for a while and then Borders went under. Actually, I think the book. <laughs> All right, Jim, you're dating yourself. That uh, was like two decades ago. <laughs> that I've was a while ago. Okay, yeah. so what are you doing today? How much of your time are you? And I know your whole family's involved in your business. Right. Your wife, your children, two your boys, ki your children, not anymore. Adult, yeah, uh, your kids, adult kids, forty-five years old. Yeah, so they're in the business. So how much of your time is spent still photographing? Well, I go out probably three or four times a week. I am crazy devoted. And uh, like yesterday, we, we went out to Alton. To Alton? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to put one picture of Alton and some of the stuff. We did the ferry, you know, we, we went to uh, Pierre Marquette. We mm -hmm. did all that. So I'll have a collage picture with uh, the riverfront and three or four pictures. Mm -hmm. So save your trip to Alton. So. Okay, yeah, no, everybody wants to go there, but there to have go. the photographs as a memory is a wonderful thing. Yeah. So how do you decide where you're going to go? How did you decide to go to Alton, and what's next on your plan? Well, on that Alton one, a uh, buddy of mine called me at, like, noon and said, Hey, Jim, it's my anniversary, my wife, and uh, we're going to go, and we did it a year before, two or three years before COVID. Do you want to go with us out to Pierre Marquette? And I said, Sure. As long as I take my camera. And my friends are very uh, congenial. They, they don't mind me stopping and doing it. We shot yeah. some cows. I mean, you know, we did yeah. all kinds of craziness there. Yeah. So anyway, I'll send you a picture of that. I would love it. I got it finished. Actually. <laughs> I would love it. Really? Did it. Quickly. One, so what's one, next? One so where, where have you not um, shot yet in town? Is there any place, <sighs> any place new? Well, I look for new all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I notice things happen now. This is kind of interesting. I was at the Science Center, and they had this one giant map. Mm -hmm. Okay, I went there last week, and that map is gone. Mm. Ah, I'm going to leave it in the book, though, because this is landmarks from 2022. Okay. Now, I don't know why they knocked that so out. So what it was about the new shot. Ferris wheel, Union oh, Station? Oh, I got the Ferris wheel. Got that? Oh, the Ferris wheel. Here's the deal. The Ferris wheel, it took six seconds to get the, the slime. I shot the gondolas, and I so they're frozen. It gets really dark over on this edge. If I can find that Ferris wheel, I will show you a Ferris <laughs> wheel. The, in the oh, book. look, I found the Ferris wheel. Oh, here we go. Okay, now hold it up so the ah, viewers can see it as well. Ferris wheel. That's beautiful. Oh my see gosh, it. and all the, yeah, the see couple now, different renditions, yes. There is probably along with the 10 or 15 Aquarium. hours in that computer time but to get the slimy, neat red thing, that's a six-second exposure. 
then to get uh, these lights, you know, that's different. So you shoot a picture for this, you shoot a picture for the arch. Actually, the arch, I enlarged 200%. Don't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> it, <laughs> so when you go, not exactly real life. <laughs> well, I tell people, I say, you go down there and try to beat that. I mean, I, I used to teach photography, too, and, and I'd say, well, you know, just take a picture and see if you can beat it. Mm -hmm. And that's cool if you can. So mm -hmm. then I have to so be, be over cheers. over your fifty plus years as a professional photographer and artist, you've seen a lot of changes, a lot of changes with right. cameras, with lenses. How do you keep up with it? Well, if you don't keep up with it, you're gone. Like in 1990, there was a big transition where computers were coming in. I paid twenty thousand dollars for my four megapixel camera in mm. 1990, mm. and I was shooting like ads for you know grandpa pigeons little bitty yeah. ads it was fine but some of my guys my buddies in the group uh as professional photographers group they didn't want to touch the computer and within a few years they were out of business right so you you had the mind and the eye for keeping up you yeah. knew probably because you're inquisitive and you got to keep up anyway also i keep up this is a fisheye lens. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a very expensive lens, but it gives you a, a different view uh, of things. I see something special here, but crazy stuff, you know, like there. A, a unique look at the yeah. world. Yeah. So for $220, I bought a lens on my. So $20,000 to now $220 for the yeah. latest and greatest. Yeah. <laughs> Times well, have I have one camera, cost $30,000. It's a Hasselblad, the one that went to the moon. I bought a Fuji for like 10 grand, and it's 102 megapixels. So, but actually, you can do a pretty good job. People send me, you know, pictures from their phone. Mm -hmm. They say, "Can you make me a 60-inch picture?" Yeah. So with the computer, you can res the file up, and there's programs that help you res it up. Instead yeah. of just using Photoshop, you use these magic ways to get it to be big yeah but the file on this is gigabytes okay. it's huge so, so you really can do it all you can take well, anybody's picture we're going to take a have to wrap up here sure but what i love is how you have spanned the decades and you're still learning and 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 in tap with the latest and greatest and and there's a lesson there for our artists out there of staying on top of the future and ahead of it, right? Enjoy so it. Yeah. thank you so much, Jim. Thanks for joining right, us Sarah. here on City Corner. Thank you thank all. You. And there's information right here on how to reach Jim Trotter and how to how to um, get some of his own art for your house and his books and all that kind of stuff. So sure. it's right here. And we hope that you will keep coming back to City Corner for the latest news on St. Louis. Thank Thanks for joining us today. Jim, thank, thank you. you.